Hi there. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to do uh, this, what I'm showing here, which are these sort of pie chart uh, clusters. Quite an effective way of, of showing your data, um, you know, especially when there's, there's lots of uh, uh, point data. So um, if I zoom in, you can see these sort of pie charts, may not have sort of blue and red color. There's a number on top. And um, which is the total features sort of involved in the pie chart. So as I zoom out, I'll get them, um, get that number increased. And um, and if I click, let's say on this one here, 211, it says this cluster represents 211 features. Active is 182, inactive is 29, and the data from this source. So, and if you click browse features, it will list all the features um, that are listed in that um, in that pie chart uh, that are involved in the whole cluster summary. How how did I make all this happen? Well, th these are bus stops in the uh, county of Kent in the UK. I downloaded them from this website, the Naptam one. And you can sort of type in any authority, so I'll go to Kent, and then you can download your data like that. So that's where it's from, and there's an API as well. But I've just downloaded a, a CSV and then added it into uh, uh, import XY data into a geodatabase as, as, as usual. I've got a video on that somewhere. Um, so, but then how did I, how did I, how did I make all this happen? Well, I'll turn that off. And um, uh, so I'll just turn all that off. So this is the raw data here. These are all the points. Uh, there's 240 or whatever it is. And these are all individual bus stops. When I click on one, I get all the data about the bus stop. One thing I notice is a status, whether it's inactive or active bus stop. Um, how up to, I think I've downloaded this maybe six months ago or so, so don't don't take it to heart, this data, uh, it's out of date. But it's a good data set to um, try stuff out and uh, for these tutorials. So I know I want to make that effect with two colors, just with two sort of values. So on the Kent bus stop, so I'll just select the layer, I'll go to styles, uh, status, because that's that holds the two values active and inactive that I want. Go to style options. It's chosen this sort of red and uh, sort of um, quite a low red actually. Let's uh, beef the red up. But actually that's active. Let's make it a nice green and the active. Sorry, the inactive make that all red. So I've just changed the colors. That's that's all I've, all I've done there. And um, but the next step is to pie chart it. That's called aggregation. So it's this button here. And um, the uh, rather than just clustering, I, I, I'd like a clustering chart effect. Because if you do just clustering, it'll just add up those those points, take the predominant data and just show the one color. I want to show multiple. And as soon as I click on it, you can see there's this pie chart effect. And also underneath there, there's what's called binning. I've got a separate video on that. Please search for it if you're not sure what binning is. Um, and I do a, I've got a video of that in uh, with Arches Pro and, and, and binning. So I've clicked on clustering chart, click on options. Let's set some settings. I can create like a donut shape. You see how it hollows out and creates a donut shape, my favorite shape of all time um, for obvious reasons. So I can hollow it out. I can also change the radius. So what this means is what's the sort of gravitational pull of the data. So if we, if I say low, you're going to get um, pie charts made with very limited amount, number of uh, points in the uh, periphery, you know, surrounding. So it's only very few. So if I increase that, it's going to make use of more data, more points um, in the surrounding area. So it's a sort of you you would just do it until you get the kind of impact you want to show i think i think that's that's good enough uh what about the size well you might you see you might want to really make the maximum you know where the where the clusters are really sizable really stand out um but i think i'll i'll make the minimum one stand out a bit 
a bit more, maybe not so much. So I don't want them too, too sort of uh, very high, you know, spiking of, of, of uh, the, the size of the graphs. Um, that's probably a good enough spread. And what about the scale threshold? Well, this is where the data, the you get the clusters turning on and off the pie charts. So if I set it to like just above where I am now, which is metropolitan area, as soon as I zoom out, um, it'll it'll still show it because the little black triangle icon there, that's the visibility sort of um, step. So as soon as I go in, see now it's gone. So flick on and off like that. So that's just setting literally what it says on the tin scale threshold. Um, what about cluster fields? Well, this is where you can just do a bit of, um, just a bit of customization. So you can say, you know, active, actually let's make that a capital, capital A and, um, uh, oh, and inactive capital I just to make it look a bit prettier but you've probably already done your your field, field alias stuff etc before here um, in the you know select fields and stuff what about the label well we can enable la uh, labels with normal class just like any uh, any other um, point there feature layer and that just shows we can choose whether it's the number of features or the number of active ones. Maybe active is actually what we're interested in, or really it's to say, well, give give us a better idea of what bus stops are inactive. Maybe there's some kind of uh, you know community bus stop type work going on, budgeting and all that sort of thing. So maybe you're interested in inactive. So now the numbers on here are the inactive ones. So maybe on that you might want to change the label style to red or something, you know, to make it sort of stand out a bit. But you can do all the label style and scaling and all, you know, just see it go on and off. It's, it's all uh, there as before. Typically, the label field would just be the total number of features, but it's totally up to you, of course. And then the pop-ups. So when you click on these, you get your basic sort of pop-up here, or how you want it to look. If uh, there's cluster summary, and you can include whatever other columns you've got in your um in this process of creating these graphs in the first place we can edit the text and put a put some html in there of what you like uh, i actually included a, a link to the site where i got the data from so you could say add content text and then uh, i'll do data from and then the link put the link in like that you see and then i can do some customization of that bit let's make it bold and make it a bit bigger maybe put it on the next line down press ok so and there it is now it appears in the pop-up so and you can do you know other stuff add other content more charts etc and, and whatever you like to do so now we have a um, uh, now we're, we are at um, what we want you see how the cluster turns off when I zoom in um, close enough at the scale threshold and as I zoom out I get the pie charts changing and you really get a really good view immediately you can see the the greater you know 629 um, sort of total there but um, and, and quite a big um, red i.e. cluster of uh, literally of, of uh, inactive bus stops but you know like I said with the labels and and etc you're just putting on um, bringing out what what data you are in interested in is it you're more interested in the green stuff or the red stuff or or whatever or maybe there's unknowns maybe there's a third value or more so you can do all that just a final point to be wary of is when it, maybe you want to change the colors what happens there is if you look at the aggregation and you're uh, clustering this th this is controlling what the style is already set at and it sort of reads the style and then off it goes and does your cl clustering so if i click on um styles you can't actually it'll it'll give you an overview of what it's done so that sort of circle is greater than um, 629 that's 500 and those are the colors so it'll give you that information but you can't change it what you have to do is you in aggregation either change the actual type or just temporarily disable it so it takes it back to the points you go back to the styles change your color and anything else in here that you want to do so maybe the active is blue yeah so now we've made that change 
say done and done. Uh, and then when you go to aggregation and reactivate it, you notice how the labels are gone. So it does reset the settings in clustering. So you do have to be wary of that. And, and indeed, if I'm wrong and, and that's not exactly what happens, then please leave a comment and let me know. But the, the settings do disappear. So in here, for example, uh, on the uh, cluster pop up, see my add content um, text box there is, is gone. You know where I had the link, it had it, it, it gone. So um, I've had to put that back in. Um, so that's one thing to be wary of. Um, but apart from that, it's actually a really powerful way um, to show your data. And uh, yeah, it's quite straightforward, easy to use. And of course, I'm in ArtGIS Online, uh, i.e. portal. So this can be easily published inside uh, Experience Builder or in your app uh, for anyone with a browser to take advantage of. So there you go. I hope you find that useful. Thank you.